many organizations are now running containers and Kubernetes, but still need the ability to run VMs. Let me show you how Palette's VMO capability makes it easy to run and manage your VMs as a first-class citizen in your Kubernetes clusters. We can begin the demo by going into a bare metal cluster. In this case, we'll go to a canonical mass provision cluster. I have a number of nodes for the infrastructure. I have one control plane node and four worker nodes. However, because this is a pallet VMO enabled cluster, we do also see a virtual machines tab. If I select the virtual machines tab, I see all the virtual machines that are running in this environment. So I have VMs that are running of type Ubuntu and Windows and other specific ones. I can deploy a new virtual machine by selecting the new virtual machine button. And essentially we get a self-service catalog items of different VMs that a user can select. This service catalog is managed by the admin team and they are able to add their own versions of operating systems, including a hardened version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux or anything else. For this demo, let's go ahead and pick Ubuntu 22. I can type in a name, Ubuntu test three, specify the CPUs, the memory, storage capabilities. Now the underlying technology of VMO is using Cooper. So if there are any specific customizations like enabling a virtual TPM or capabilities, you can specify those configuration options here. Select next and then click on create virtual machine. The provisioning process itself will take about 20 seconds as the VM is being cloned to a, a new host. I can jump into an existing VM like this should be one, and I can see all the observability data related to the VM. Everything from its overview to the details of how many CPUs, GPUs, and other things are running inside here, including additional tolerations, affinity rules, and advanced customizations. If I select the console view, this is the actual VM and the application that's running inside of it. Now, one of the more advanced capabilities that we support in this, in this platform is something called live migration. So if I start the Shippy app again, notice that while this game is running, I can go ahead and trigger a migration. Now, the status of the VM goes to migrating. Currently, the VM is running on bare metal node 36, but within about 30 seconds or so, the VM will fully move over to another bare metal node and none of the actual working memory of the VM would be impacted. So there is no impact to the users or workloads. Let's give it a few more seconds. And notice that now the VM is in running state. It has migrated to bare metal node 78. If I come back into the console view, right, the game is still running the exact same way, right? There is no impact whatsoever. We do support other advanced capabilities and day two operations. If you have to add additional network cards of maybe type vert IO or E1000, you can also go ahead and do disk management. So potentially it can add a new disk of 50 gigabytes or 40 gigabytes of type disk that is based on either SCSI, vert IO or SATA. And then we also support capabilities like backups and snapshots. So I can take a backup of the entire VM and they're restored at some point later. Now on the overview tab, we also do support observability data for both the virtual machines and the infrastructure. So for example, I can select the Grafana UI and I can log in. And then if I go into my start dashboards, we have a number of different dashboards available. from alert manager to the Kubernetes specific control plane components, et cetera. But if I select starred, I can see access to the virtual machine dashboard, which for each of the VMs, I can see information about its CPU memory. I'll pick something like Ubuntu one, as well as the disk operations, IOPS, traffic and latency, and also the network utilization. If I want to see additional information for the infrastructure, Go back to the dashboards and I can select start. And then I can go ahead and click on this one, node exporter. And now for each of the bare metal nodes, I can see its CPU information, the load averages, memory information, and more. 
all of this observability and metrics data is available out of the box. That wraps a very short demo on VMO. There are many advanced capabilities we provide, including the ability to import existing vSphere VMs very quickly into our platform. And optionally, if you have commercial OVAs from vendors like F5 or Avi load balancers, you can also very quickly import those OVAs as templates into our platform. If you'd like to learn more about VMO, we have lots of resources on our website, including our blogs, webinars, and comprehensive documentation. Just search for VMO on spectrecloud.com. Thank you.